Good day everyone, welcome back to Risky Rollers. I'm Dalton, and this is the new Leagues of Votan Codex. We're all super excited about the new squats here at the channel, aren't we Lockie? Uh, new. Absolutely. <laughs> so I can't wait to share all these cool rules with you. We're going to have a series of videos on the subject. We're going to cover the rules and special abilities that the leagues have. We're then going to cover the sub-factions, the different leagues, as well as their custom leagues that you can build for them. We're also then going to cover the relics, warlord traits, and psychic powers. We're going to do a video on the stratagems, a video on the data sheets and the points, and top it all off with a video on the chapter approved rules. That's their secondaries, and we're also going to include a little bit of list building or collection building tips uh, and things that we think could be interesting to uh, work out from, from there. So, without any further ado, make sure you subscribe to see the entire series, and let's crack right on. Alright, for today's preview, we're going over the sub-factions, this is their leagues and the different league traits, as well as the custom ones you can build for the leagues of Votan. I'm really cool because these are the things that get to make your entire army feel and play differently. I actually really like them too, because there's a bunch of them that do change the way the army functions, which is really cool. So, to start with, we're going to go over the Trans-Hyperion Alliance. First up, what a great name. Secondly, as you can see here, this is the format that the rest of the, leagues, uh, rest of the league customs will have. You've got the League Traits, or the League Customs, then you've got the Ancestral Judgments, uh, which is like an, an ability that interacts with Judgment Tokens. Uh, then you've got a single Warlord Trait, single Relic, and a single Stratagem for each League. Fairly standard stuff, but they are pretty cool. So, the trans Hyperion Alliance, their League Custom, is called Honor the Ancestors. This has two parts. The first part is, much like the Inari Strength from Death, any unit that has taken casualties gets a plus one to hit from there on out. Pretty great. The second part is that any time wound rolls are made um, against targets with uh, against targets with judgment tokens, wound rolls of six get an extra AP. Now this is doubly great because not only do you get this bonus on wound rolls that you naturally roll and roll sixes of, but because the judgment token's auto wounding counts as a natural six, it also triggers on that. So all your auto wounds also have an extra AP, and then some of your other wounds will get that as well which is pretty sweet on an army that a lot of its weapons are already middling uh, AP. It'll just push them over the edge to that really nice damage point where they'll go straight through power armor. So their Ancestral Judgment, uh, this one just here, this is the thing that interacts with the Judgment Tokens. And what this one does is that anytime you target something with Judgment Tokens, you get to re-roll a wound roll of one. Pretty cool. Um, now, this isn't something that affects um, affects the auto wounds, so you're not going to get any benefit there, but they're already amazing. So this will just help make those wound rolls that you do have to make a little bit more reliable. Now they have a warlord trait called Nomad Strategist, and this just lets you redeploy three units at the start of the game, much like all the other redeploys in the game. This is actually an amazing warlord trait, being able to redeploy these units, especially considering the army's going to be a little finicky and a little bit, uh, a little bit flimsy, not super durable. This will actually mean that you can make the most out of your deployment and really react to the way your opponent's deployed. Then you have a 1cp strat for Cult of Veneration. And all this is, is a 1cp for a 5 plus Feel No Pain against Mortal Wounds, which is one of the things the Leagues of Votan suffer from the most. So having a 1cp strat to pick any unit and go, you're not going to take as much damage from this massive Mortal Wound dump as you thought you would, is amazing. You then have a relic called the Corv Duas. Now this is for a Grimnir, which is their Psyker model with its two little drones. And this relic actually affects the drones themselves, which is kind of cool. It gives them an additional wound, and then also makes the whole unit, gives it an extra deny and a plus one against all, uh, four orts deny. So a plus one to deny, which tests every time it makes one, which is pretty sweet. And that's the trans Hyperion Alliance. Next up, we have the Greater Thurian League. Now these are the poster, poster boys, or poster squats, uh, if I may. These guys are the ones that have been on all the, the preview pictures and stuff. They're the teal and the, the white colored ones. And they're actually the ones that I've already tried in the game, and so they're pretty sweet. So, their league custom, Ruthless Efficiency. The first part of this is that they count as two models when determining control of an objective. And then uh, anything with ten or more wounds counts as five models. This is amazing! This is the trait the Red Corsairs have. This is a trait of my, the most played custom Necrons get when it affects their already obsec stuff. And this is just an incredible ability. It doesn't sound like much because it's not giving more objectives secured. But doubling the number of models that you count as having on objectives means that when you're playing those five turn games and the last three turns are back and forth trading on objectives, all that kind of stuff, your army's going to be that much more efficient at doing it than your opponents. Amazing. The second part is that any time they shoot or fight, 
they get to reroll one hit roll and one rune roll for that unit, which is just incredible. A bunch of armies have one half of this, so this league getting both of them together, amazing. Uh, their Ancestral Judgment means that they count when they target a unit that already has a Judgment Token, they count the number of Judgment Tokens that unit has to be one higher. That means with one Judgment Token, you're counting it as two, and with two, you're counting it as three. This is incredible. This means that your Auto Wounding ability is proccing even easier. Couple this with an innate reroll to hit and wound, and suddenly your damage goes through the roof, which is pretty sweet. They have a Warlord trait called Pragmatic Wisdom, and now this is fairly straightforward, this is just a 5 plus regen for CP, still caps at 1 per turn as per usual. There are other ways to get around that in the book. But um, it's good. Uh, Votan, as far as I can see, have a lot of stratagems that you're going to want to be using and upgrading units with. So this will actually be really handy to make them that much more efficient at doing that. They then have a 1 CP strat for Appraising Glare. Um, now what this happens is when, a, when your Carl, which is your character, uses its Grim Efficiency ability, which puts a Judgment Token on, on a model, you spend one CP and they gain an additional one. So it puts two of them on a model. And keeping in mind, that will count as three for your army. So you're essentially pointing at a unit and going, you're gonna die and there's not much you can do about it. Pretty sweet. Then you have a relic called the Corvix Cuirass. Now, this uh, essentially gives a bearer a four plus invulnerable save. Um, they, and they reduce the AP by an additional one, which does stack with void armor. Now, this sounds amazing. Um, and depending on what model it's going on and how their save characteristic and wounds characteristic sits already, could be incredible. It's pretty good, um, and yeah, it'll depend on, on how you want to build your army, but this is a very good contender to switch out for one of the other relics. The third one to cover is the Urani Surter Regulates. The Urani Surter, Surter, the Urani Surter Regulates have a league custom called Dower Survivalists. Now this is actually, okay, this sounds on paper pretty good, but I think the next one's probably a slightly better durability buff. But nonetheless, what the Dower Survivalist League custom does is it adds one to toughness of models with this trait, all of them, across the army. So all your troops are now toughness five, your big beefy, um, your exosuits are now toughness six base, and there's other ways to upgrade toughness throughout the army as well, which could be pretty nasty. Their second part is that you can reroll failed morale tests with this trait. All right, fair enough. It'll come up once or twice a game, maybe. Cool. Their Ancestral Judgment ability um, is that any time they target a unit that has no Judgment tokens, they count it as having one. Now, in the game I did play with the Great Arthurian League, I actually started to realize that even though you can put out Judgment tokens in a few spots, you are going to be playing a lot of games, especially early game, where you don't have them up on units. So having the ability to always hit and wound on sixes automatically is pretty sweet. So their Warlord trait is Grim Pragmatism. This is just a 5 up feel no pain on the Warlord. It's nice, uh, it'll add to the toughness and durability of a Warlord, sure. Their stratagem is called Waste Not Your Last Breath and costs 1 CP and this is a fight on death for a character that hasn't already fought. This is pretty cool especially when you've got things like Karls or the, um, the Ioneer Champions that are putting out a pretty crazy amount of damage for their points. Then their relic is called the Abiding Mantle. Uh, and all this does is that if this unit, this unit cannot be targeted unless it's the closest enemy unit. So it goes in a character, and that character has the old way the character protection used to work back in 8th edition before, um, before it mattered if they were near other models or things. It's nice, depending on some character builds, it could be handy, but I'm not seeing it straight away as better than any or many of the other relics that you actually get in the book. Then you have the league, the Ymir Conglomerate. Now these guys, I think, are actually probably the, uh, the durability buff of choice. So these guys have a league custom called Master Armorers. This adds four inches to the range of all weapons other than relics that models this custom are equipped with. This is probably one of the biggest durability buffs this army can get. Now it sounds strange. This is a weapon buff. Why is it affecting durability? Because a lot of the powerful weapons are short ranged, Anytime you're getting into range to use them, you're also bringing yourself into range to be fought back against. So being able to have that extra four inches and stay further away from your opponent actually means that your army's gonna be a lot more survivable. The other part of this is then the next bit, which is that models with this unit gate that have a save characteristic of two plus get a four plus invulnerable save and everything else gets a five plus invulnerable save. That's right. Models with a two plus armor save 
just have a basic Fortress invul inbuilt with this trait, which is incredible. Um, invulnerable saves across your army are one of the things that you lack with Leagues of Oten. So being able to have five pluses and four pluses everywhere is insane. I'm really keen to try this one out. So their Ancestral Judgment ability is that each time they target a unit within half range, um, the target has one or more judgment tokens already. The AP of that attack is improved by one. This is kind of cool. Um, it's not the best AP buff, but it'll come in handy. Um, now, it's weird that it doesn't really stack too well with your added range for this. So you're going to be further away to start with, but when you get close, you're going to hit a little bit harder. It's cool. I wouldn't take it just for this, but I wouldn't complain about it either. Then you've got a Warlord trait called Guild Connections. And uh, this basically means that the damage characteristic of all the weapons your Warlord has is increased by one. Cool. Their Pulsed Beam discharges their stratagem. It costs one CP. Um, and this happens in your opponent's shooting phase, uh, in your shooting phase, sorry. When you select a unit to shoot with, you choose one model that that unit has that has a beam weapon. Um, and then until the end of that phase, every time that beam weapon hits any target, including the ones it passes over, it deals one mortal wound in addition to normal damage. Okay, kind of cool. Uh, again, not always going to come up, but when you've got that nice beam attack that like hits three or four or five units, and you've got that CP there, you can go, cool, I'm actually going to dish out a bunch of extra damage as well. Kind of cool. Finally, you've got the relic, the last crest of Yaluk. So the last crest of Yaluk goes on a shield crest model only, which is basically anyone that has the little hooked things over the top. Um, once per battle, they activate it and they have a three plus invulnerable save. Cool, uh, much like I think there's a space marine uh, relic that does the same thing, a once per battle throw up invulnerable save. Um, the armor Indominus, I think is the one does that, and then in addition, it gives them a 4 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds, just for that character. Again, mortal wounds is something you're worried about, so that's pretty good, and a once per battle 3 up invuln, also pretty good. And this model will already have an invuln thanks to the crest, or a teleport crest. Um, so it's kind of just adding on to that durability that they already have. The last league is the Cronus Hegemony. Now these guys have a league custom called Battle Prowess, and this is your close combat, getting close and hit them hard league. So each time a unit with that custom fights, if they charged, were charged, heroically intervened, or were heroically intervened against, you add plus one to the attacks characteristic committees in that unit. Pretty sweet. And then each time they make a melee attack, if they charge, etc., they add plus one to the strength as well. So plus one attacks and plus one strength on the charge, oh, that's pretty tasty. Their ancestral judgment ability, which is the judgment token thing, um, each time they attack a unit that has two or more judgment tokens, the AP of that attack is improved by one. This is only in melee, but still pretty nice. A lot of those plasma weapons are going to be AP two and three, uh, and a lot of their basic guys don't have AP at all. So being able to have that one when you're just, you know, hitting them with your guns and your gun butts, that's pretty cool. Then you have their Warlord trait, Exemplary Hero. So this time, it makes your Warlord better against other characters and monsters and things. So you add one to the Warlord's attacks characteristic every time they fight a character or monster. Um, you reroll all hit rolls for, for your character, period. Uh, and then each time they, they also get plus one to wound against characters and monsters. So plus one to hit and wound against characters and monsters, and full rerolls to hit. Nice. Their stratagem is Bloody Expectations, and this is one CP. Um, you use it in the fight phase when, uh, when you fight. Um, you pick a unit. And until the end of the phase, every time they make a melee attack, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. Now, it doesn't say that uh, it counts as anything in particular, so therefore this won't trigger the judgment ability. So all you'll have is you'll have one hit roll, you'll roll a six. If you've got a judgment token, that hit roll will automatically wound, and you'll have another roll to when you need to roll to wound. Pretty cool. Their relic is the Just Blade, um, and this replaces a a Forge Wrought Plasma Axe or Dark Star Axe only. Um, and this is essentially a plus one strength, minus four AP damage two weapon, and invulnerable saves can't be made against it. Cool, it's your way to ignore invulns in combat. Pretty standard for armies these days. It's kind of cool and it makes sense on the combat guys. So those are the five uh, league customs that you have that have the full suite of, of abilities available. They're all pretty sweet. I've already tried the three in League and it's amazing. I'm keen to try all of them, but the Emir Conglomerate in particular sounds pretty sweet as a big old durability buff. But you also have some really cool custom League traits. These are called Established League Customs, and the way they work is you pick two out of four options um, that are your League Customs, and then you do get to pick one Ancestral Judgment. 
So you don't lose that second half of the benefit like a lot of custom uh, traits do. You still don't have any Warlord traits, relics, or stratagems, but that's fine. If you want those, you can take the main leagues. So the uh, first of the league customs you get to pick from is called Martial Clone Skines. Now, each time a model makes a melee attack, um, if they charge, were charged, etc., you add one to the attack strength characteristic. Kind of cool, comes right from the Cronus Hegemony we heard about a minute ago. Um, the next league trait you can choose from is Stoic, uh, and this just rerolls fail morale tests from this unit. Again, cool um, comes from one of the earlier um, leagues, but yeah, nothing to scoff at, it's, it's nice. You then have Honor in Toil. Each time you make an attack and this unit is below its starting strength, you add one to the hit roll. So uh, again, this comes directly from the, um, the, the first one I talked about, which I've already forgotten the name of, but it was a cool name, uh, the Trans-Hyperion Alliance or Vianari Strength from Death, if you're that way inclined. Then you have War Songs. So each time this model or a unit with this ability makes an attack against a target that is in combat with another unit with this ability, so each time you've got two guys in combat or two units in combat with the same target, um, you get to reroll hit rolls. Just all of them. So that's kind of cool. That'll go really well for uh, lots of MSU units because you're going to have lots of little charges going on and they'll actually bring this up and stack it up really nicely. So those are the four that you get to choose two of, and then you have a bunch of others, uh, well, under the four, which are Ancestral Judgments, but you can only choose one of these. Now, these are actually pretty cool, and I actually think these are potentially the more powerful side of these abilities, um, and you make sure to follow through the whole series, get to the last video, and I'll actually bring up a couple of list building ideas, including some pretty sweet uh, combinations of these. So the first one you get to choose is Vengeful. Each time a unit with this custom is destroyed by an enemy unit, that unit gains two judgment tokens instead of one. That's pretty cool. And again, it'll stack really well with lots of minimum small uh, units. Um, so if you're running lots of MSU um, and running a lot of Sagittors and breaking your squads up, this will come in really nice because your opponent will pick units up, but that makes it they're gonna get hit back even harder. The next one is called Brutal Efficiency. Each time a model with this custom makes an attack um, against a target with judgment tokens, hit rolls of six score an additional hit. Pretty cool. Uh, again, that's coming down directly from the Cronus Hegemony, um, but it's still a, a nice trait to have access to. You have Close Quarters Prioritization. Each time a unit with this custom declares a charge, if, uh, they de if only declares a charge against one target, and that target has judgment tokens, you add two inches to your charge roll. That's pretty spicy. It makes those charges much more reliable. and means you don't have to get as close as early to still make good charges. Um, you then finally have Taking It Personally. Uh, now this time, each time a unit with this custom is selected to shoot or fight, if all the models in that unit target the same target, the same target unit, um, after those attacks, if they if a enemy unit suffers any damage, then you roll a dice and on a five plus, they gain a judgment token. Now you get to add one to that result if the uh, target unit is below half strength. So that's kind of cool. It's a little bit wordy, obviously, a little bit situational, but being able to proc, proc those extra judgment tokens across the army, this will start to rack up across a battle. So it's pretty cool. And that wraps up uh, all the sub-factions, the, the leagues, and the custom leagues that you have access to with the leagues of Votan. There are some really cool abilities in here, and there's a bunch of different army archetypes I'm already starting to see and starting to think about how I could build them. So I'm really excited to try them out. I hope you are as well. So yeah, make sure to stick around, catch me for the next one, and uh, make sure you subscribe to catch that battle report we do when all of this finally comes out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that preview as much as I did. I'm super excited to get these space dwarfs onto the table, and I know Lockie's keen to face them. Spot on. So. <laughs> We're all excited for that, so not only are we doing this series where we cover the entire book and all the rules coming out of it, which make sure you subscribe so you see the whole thing, but we're also doing a full codex review as soon as that book drops. And when we do, Lockie, what are we doing about that? Give away the book! Not just the book though. And the army box! And the army box! Ooh, it's gonna be cool. I can't wait. I, I love squats. They're cool. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that, and you make sure you catch the cheeky battle report we'll have out with them very soon. See you guys on the table.